Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. My game plan for tomorrow, nightly video. I'm putting it on the free and the paid because I think it's so important. I think it's a lot of good information. If you make some money off of this, sign up for the free trial. My loyal subscribers, sorry, but I had to promote myself a little. What's going on in here? Number one, earnings. After the close, yesterday was NVIDIA and Teladoc, which I really think set the tone for today. A lot of people uh, just tech... If, if NVIDIA goes down, usually a lot of the other chips do, which is what happened. Tonight, Beyond Meat is getting destroyed. And tomorrow, DraftKings, that should be a big deal in here. And Kronos in the pot space. AMC with earnings tomorrow, that should also be real interesting. It's gotten propped up by the Robin Hooders. Dr. Witt sentiment table. I don't show you a lot, a lot of times this, but as you see, this changed a little from yesterday. I posted this for my subscribers yesterday, but the SPY at 61% is relatively high. The QQQ at 64% after a couple of days of a sell-off is also very high. IWM has been outperforming and now it's not as uh, it's not as active. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you go to the IWM, go to message volume, it's 1298. But you go to the SPY, and you go to message volume, it's 39,000. So it's a lot easier to do the algorithm. As you see, SPY stayed stubbornly bullish. We'd like to see this under 50%, and then you usually get a sustained rally. But I'm watching, I'm watching this carefully. The other thing I'm watching is world markets. So what do I see in here? And it's fascinating. Number one, I'm going to go and put the S&P on the left. So you sort of get a perspective. This is the S&P, NASDAQ, E-minis, all this stuff on weekly charts. As you see, they're still in the big uptrend. The NASDAQ is the only one that looks like more of a, than a blip. On the other hand, go and look at the TLT on the upper left. Holy cow, how about on a monthly chart? Yes, notice that these really in the grand scheme of things are near all-time highs. They're off by about a month. This is a big deal. It's almost where it was in the end of Nove uh, the uh, June of 2019. You don't want to know where the equity markets were in 2019. All I'm saying is the bond market after a while starts to be on traders' minds. If it goes down enough, which it has. Once it accelerated down, it pulled down the NASDAQ. Why the NASDAQ first? Because higher interest rates mess up the cash flow model for the valuation of a lot of NASDAQ stocks. So when this goes down, it hits the NASDAQ. Weekly, you see that this is just a blip, but this gives you a good perspective of where massive support is. Uh, massive support, this is a weekly chart. Massive support in the TLT and the bonds right here, right here, NASDAQ. Right here, really about 500 points lower. Now, this is oversold, so it could work this off uh, by going to new highs. And I'll show you on a different chart of what I'm looking for. Infrastructure plans. That's why the E-mini is held up so well. And the Russell for the same reason. But they could go down a lot more. Just keep that in mind. This is what you want to see in a healthy market. You have this consolidation, no too much extension from any kind of move in averages. Chinese market too far away, it just sold off 2,000 points. I'm just telling you, today, the Dow Jones was down 400, big deal. This is nothing. It could get a lot worse, but we're getting oversold. So this is how I'm going to do my game plan tomorrow. Number one, all eyes on the bonds, no doubt about it. Massive blip intraday. That could have been the bottom right at monthly support. Usually what I've seen in my experience is this starts rallying, but the S&P and the NASDAQ have a mind of their own to the downside. Now, why would I say that? Number one, from experience. Number two, if the bonds rally, the stocks that have by far held up the most, the city groups, the Goldman Sachs, I mean, just straight up unbelievable in there on how far it's gone up. I think the faster they went up, if bonds do have a big rally, these are going to get nailed. So my favorite short ideas at the moment are the banks. Do I have three reasons? No. 
except they're extended. And if interest rates, this has been a product of interest rates. If Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Citigroup start to see the bond market rally, I think you're going to see these drastically, drastically underperform. That's what I think. Citigroup in this zone. JP Morgan in this zone, the 148, and Goldman Sachs is the worst. That could easily go to 320, down another seven or eight points. So my game plan tomorrow is if the bonds open up, way up, I mean, they're up two ticks tonight, but if they buy open way up and the ES and NASDAQ open up fractionally, I'm telling you, I'm going to fade the banks first. That's the first thing I'm going to do in there. This is the other thing to watch. The Dow Jones futures getting near support. Russell getting near support. NASDAQ getting near layers of support. And the ES is sort of. It now depends on this. Are we going to breach this? If we do, that'll be ugly. That could get us down another 100 points on the S&P. Right now, I think the lowest risk is the mess with the banks. Even though they've been the strongest, I think that if bonds rally, uh, what's going to happen is they're going to start selling the winners. So the first priority for me is to look at the banks. Now, you might be like, why not Caterpillar? Caterpillar has been going up because of the infrastructure plan. The second they announce it, these will go straight down. I still think they're too extended, but no rollover yet. So let me show you my longs and short ideas. Number one, if we open up fractionally, like the NASDAQ up 100 and the ES up 30, I'm going to look to short the bank stocks. If the bonds refuse to rally tomorrow, but the broad markets open up, I'm going to fade NASDAQ stocks again. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So let me show you some of these and what I think longer term. So this is the bonds, as you see on the left. And you see it's hit support, multi-year support. On the other hand, is this doesn't have a lot of support. And that's the next thing we're going to be watching. If this doesn't hold this little level, you got 3,800 followed by an air hold of 3,720. I think those are why I want to mess with the banks, which are a big part of the SPX. What else am I going to do in here? I'm going to look for support zones like this. If this goes down another 100, it was down 100 today, there are going to be a lot of really good looking stocks at support. But I thought I'd start with these. Amazon, you see what I see on a daily chart. A better hold in here, very little support. Google, I already had this on my morning charts days ago up at this level. You see the support. Yep, a little triangle forming. If they could go there. There's the air holes. Shopify at support. But why am I even showing this when the stock was down 50 or 60 today? If markets rally, because there's a lot of stocks that are oversold on a daily, I want the most bang for the buck. And that's going to be like buying the Shopify's of the world. Do you buy it here? No way. Not yet. When do you buy it? When you see some kind of great reversal candle. That's what I'm going to look for. A lot of these end by having some kind of W pattern, and then you buy the breakout. I would like to see this overshoot to the 1100 level, to the massive support, and then I'll look to do call spreads a couple of weeks out. Trade desk, this is a different thing. Look at that if it doesn't hold 755. Earnings, already out. This could easily fill the gap another 100 points. Now, I don't want to get that bearish. Uh, but I'm talking about there are stocks that could still have room to sell off. M, uh, Tessa has good support in the 16, it's 6, uh, 15 level. NVIDIA, longer term, I want to play this to the downside, but now it's hitting support. Oversold on a daily chart, but no kind of rollover yet to even think of buying. I mean, of uh, no uh, reverse yet to show any think of buying it yet. Now, if intraday I start seeing this and I start seeing some kind of pattern that looks good, what's a good pattern? That's a good pattern. In this type of market with the bonds down, you can't screw around with quasi bull flags. You got to go for a real one. And we don't have that yet. If this hits support and then form something like that, 
yeah, I'm going to look to buy calls. Remember, tomorrow's a normal a weekly expiration. We could definitely get some cheap calls in here to buy. Adobe forming a top. Roku, yeah, it could go down and fill this level. All I'm doing in here is finding stocks that could go down no matter what and stocks that could go up no matter what. As you see, this has very little support because if we open up for actually, these are the stocks I'm going to pick on. Goldman Sachs, I mentioned, Home Depot forming a nice top. All oversold. So what's going to be the key to the next couple of weeks? Number one is the bond market. Number two is how all these work off their oversold. Are they going to work it off by only going to resistance zones? So I'm just telling you, overall, if bonds don't have a massive rally, I'm bearish for the next month or two. Facebook near support. Caterpillar has just been amazing. Boeing. And this is going to go with my long ideas. I thought I had it up here. And I'll go over those in a minute. UPS forming a big old top. Look at that. Holy cow. JP Morgan, like I said, just developing. Apple, you got a lot of layers of support. We've been playing this on the breakdowns. In fact, today I posted on my private Twitter feed that trend line. When that broke, all hell broke loose. Went down about 400 points from there. Very exciting to post that before it happened on our private Twitter feed. CarMax. Also forming a top. Look at this sucker. Yep. These are things that could go down even if the broad market rallies. Riot and Mara. Why would I show these when they've already gotten nailed? Because they aren't near support yet. Definitely Mara could get down to here to 25. And Riot could get all the way to 30 if it doesn't hold 45. So these are stocks that could go down no matter what. How about on the long side? Now, I have a lot of longs in here, and this doesn't mean I'm buying them tomorrow. But I have to be opportunistic. If the ES opens down 60, there's stocks that are at support. You've got to respect that those would be the first ones I'd look for reversal candles. Regeneron, nice support in this zone. Rumored takeover. You don't buy it yet. You wait for reversal candles, and we don't have that yet. Do you have it here? No. Did you have it on a 15 minute yesterday or a five? Yes, you had a W pattern two days ago and then a break above it near support. We don't have that yet, but I'm watching it carefully. Spotify already getting nailed. That 280 level is really a great support. Uh, same thing, I'll be looking for reversal candles. Biogen has been really holding up. They might have news on their Alzheimer's drug on a dump. I want to buy call spreads above the market going out about a month. Teladoc, yeah, the better the virus gets, the worse for Teladoc, but I like it at 180. I think that's going to be a takeover candidate in the 180 level. Before you think there's no way it could go down another 39, well, it was down 35 today. Sure could. Boeing, what do I think of Boeing? I think Boeing in the 180 level is where I want to buy it. Now, these are if the market really falls apart. Just keep that in mind. Vertex, the 204 level. Jazz, and this is exact. I put this on here for everyone for a really cool idea. Number one, you see that it could sell off to that 160. But we opened down in the broad markets. Guess what the stock did on the opening? Yep, it was down here and then rallied seven points. The key is if you open down enough, you can put in low ball bids in these stocks and sometimes you get amazing fills. This stock is still in an uptrend. Seattle Genetics at, uh, at support. ALNY near support. These are all drug stocks. Rare, I'm getting a little nervous. I'd rather see it down here, but my favorite is CRSP. Everybody loved it at 220. I want to see an overshoot to this level, and I'm going to buy long-term call spreads probably in July. iRobot up because of the Robin Hood effect. Same thing, though. If it gets down to here, you got to think of buying near 100. I'm telling you, if the market's open way down, I want these ideas. If the market's open way up because of bonds, I like the ideas on the bottom. TXMD, a lot of big players long that. Earnings next week, I want to see how it withstands earnings. I want to buy that long term. AGDC, oversold right at support. Another one that could give you good bang for the buck. As you see, even on the close, it rallied 16 cents. I'm going to look to buy out of the money calls. You, uh, Urban One, minority-owned bank. Guess what? I mean, minority-owned radio station. 
Another stock I really like, but an overshoot. I want to see an overshoot into here, and I'll probably buy like 10,000 shares just to let you know. Venom, still a good-looking chart. Uh, looking to buy dips around 15. AG, silver stock, same thing. Only, only, only on panics. I want to buy this in that 16 level, no doubt about it. Platinum producer, SPSW. I'm talking about if we have a big air hole, I want to buy this in here. These are, I think, really good ideas. Ballard Power coming out with earnings soon, but the overshoot to 24 is a good idea. ALLO still is retaining its bull flag for now. So that's one I'm going to watch really carefully in here. CMPS, really like that, working on psychedelic drug stuff. In this area, the 41 level to me is a layup. BTAI at support. US trying to hold support in this zone. So just keep that in mind. There are a lot of them that are near support, but you got to see how they open. Biomarin had earnings tonight, already going down, but this 77 level is support. Biohaven, another drug stock. It's 80, 76. You could see these a mile away. CVAC 85. Data dog rumor takeover. I like it in the 90 area. We were buying calls earlier this week. MBIX 103. Greta in this zone, right around the 112 area. So the way I'm looking at these is I'm being opportunistic. If the markets tomorrow open way down and this ES gets into this zone, I'll show you on a four-hour chart. In this zone, which is 100 more points, it's not that big a deal. It went down 100 today. If it has an air hole like that, these are the stocks I'm going to look for entry points. I'm either going to buy stock buy vertical call spreads above the market, or if it's a stock that has thin options. So this is a little trader trick. So you see CRISPR down. You see it was down six. I told you the support is like 120. If you see something like the Julys, and you see the July 200s have a three-point wide market, I'm going to try to lowball it. So if the stock's down seven, I'm going to put in to buy these at like three. I mean, something like that, some weird thing like that, where even if the stock continues lower, you can make money because the spreads are so wide and people panic. Look for the open interest. The higher the open interest, the more likely that there are traders that are going to panic. So I'm going to try to lowball CRSP, Rare, ALNY. They all have March options that might, the market makers might widen them out on the opening, and I'll try to put in lowball bids. Hope you like this video. Like I said, should be exciting tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised to see the bonds have a strong rally and then the banks sell off. Have a good night. Take care.